Hi everybody, uh, I'm Tom Hall, as you may know me from previous episodes of the Rock to the Cloud series that we're talking about all things server here in the UK. Um, in this video, we're going to be discussing well, the exciting subject of Windows Server 2019 and everything that everyone's favourite subject, licensing. Um, so as you know, um, every episode we've got a fantastic special guest uh, to kind of help answer these questions, debunk a few myths, kind of get in there and try and understand a few things. Um, but as with every single episode, if you've got any questions or you've got any comments, please drop them below and we very much appreciate it. So this episode, we're talking about Rock, The Rock, obviously sponsored by uh, Dwayne Johnson, our, uh, our, our fantastic sponsor of everything we do on, on Windows Server 2019 Rock, but also OEM licensing um, and we're going to be talking about sort of debunking the myths behind it um, there's a lot of confusion that people have about why would i choose this licensing type what do i use it for what's the scenario people get really confused about it so it's actually super super simple uh, if you need to attach rock uh, then uh, obviously uh, you need to know how to license it properly so today uh, for the next 30 minutes we're going to be catching up with a very special guest our one and only Mr. Pete Burns, all the way from Scotland. So, uh, hey Pete, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. Um, so, what are we going to be talking about today, Pete Burns? And um, you know, maybe you can tell the audience a little bit about yourself, and, and we can kind of figure out why you're an expert. Why are you an expert, Pete? Uh, why am I an expert? That's a, that's a long and protracted story, and I don't think we've got half an hour for that, Tom. So, uh, quick potted history: I spent many years in server storage and networking kind of grew up around that arena moved into software uh, over the last kind of five to ten years and i uh, found myself as uh, the windows server 2019 server champ for the uk and i on supporting all of our great partners resellers and our uh, m and our hpe dell fujitsu and lenovo partnership as well so really anything that's to do with server and attach, I, I'm the yeah. person to come and ask that question to. So you're not you're not really you're not a architect because there's loads of solution architects out there, but you're more of a you're more of a surveyor. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't that, just make sure. That, yeah, yeah, you're a I, solution I, I, surveyor. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm more <laughs> of that quantity surveyor. So so dealing with the, yeah. the, the costs, the commercial side of everything. Uh, what's the best license type? And this is this is an ideal session for today because certainly one of the things that I found is the the myths around OEM rock against volume license or open licensing, so any other form of Microsoft licensing, what you can and cannot do. Uh, so I know that you've got some some questions that you're wanting to ask me today. So I'll hand that back to you, or are you wanting this just to be a free form? <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's jump into those questions straight away about OEM and rock licensing, and um, you know, let's let's blow people out the water with this stuff because I, you know, I think uh, I think once they once they hear what you've got to say, I think they'll be set, certainly selling more 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 Dwayne Johnson um, than ever before. Uh, right, okay, so um, right, fundamentally, first question, really simple: uh, what is the difference between OEM rock? Just eat. Bit of just well, eat. No, bit, bit, this, this is live. It's, it's fine. Don't delivery. worry about it. Delivery. You've got a delivery coming. Um, anyway, let's not worry about what you're having for lunch. Um, the question, just to go back to that, is what is, fundamentally, what is the difference between OEM Rock and volume licensing, Pete? Because, uh, you know, I want to know. And if, if you look at it from, from if you look at it from a feature and functionality point of view and standpoint, <clears throat> there is no difference. So it's the same license. The difference is in the license terms. So how you actually buy the license. So generally, a volume license is purchased through an agreement that could be you have to make a certain commitment over a certain period of time, and then that's renewed after that fixed term so it could be anything from 12 months to three years whereas oem and rock is purchased up front with your service purchase your server purchase so it's more of a perpetual license so if you think about it there is no difference in the features and functions of the actual license they do the exact same thing 
it's the license terms that are different and that's where quite a few people get confused because they think okay that you can't do some things with it so it's the same thing it's just how you pay for it that's different and am i right in thinking that you know volume licensing for example there's like a minimum requirement or there's some this there's, there's other rules attached to volume licensing and where's with the rock and oem license you can just buy it on its own is that a thing it, it is and and certainly over the the last few years we've seen a difference in in how we at microsoft have licensed oem and rock we've moved away from more of that live and die on the server that everybody thinks oem and rock rock does there are certain things that that you can do now for example uh, Windows Server 2019 data center version comes with reassignment rights straight out the bat. So there is a, yeah. a license you can buy as an OEM or ROP with reassignment rights that gives you the ability to move that every 90 days. So if you yeah. have an infrastructure where you are looking to move from server to server over the life, lifetime of that infrastructure, then data center with reassignment rights are uh, is the, the license of ch choice for you. Then if you look at standard, sorry Tom, if you look at standard, yeah. uh, what you what you do have is we've changed in the, since 2019, whereas before it lived and died on the, the, the server, now the additional licenses that you buy uh, mm. for Windows Server Standard can be moved to another appropriately licensed server. So we've brought in the ability for you to move your licenses from server to server with, with different features and functions. So that's great because that's obviously a lot more accessible for people and that whole live and die motion's gone. Now, again, I'm just really conscious that sometimes when I talk to people that we, you know, there's acronyms, right? And, you know, I kind of think probably people probably know maybe what those acronyms are, but let's, let's demystify those acronyms. So there's, OEM and then there's Rock. Again, there might be some differences between them, but I know that OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer, and I know that Rock stands for Reseller Option Kit. But as a license type, is there a difference between two of them? Because again, you, we've we've mentioned them in the same breath, but what's the difference between those two? Again, again, there is no difference in the features and functionality of the actual software itself. So the application does the exact same thing uh, as OEM and ROG. The difference is, and the easiest way to remember it is OEM is pre-installed and reseller option right. kit ROG is install ready. So reseller option kit comes as media in the box in the server that the reseller yeah. can then add a va an add value service on and configure that server for the customer. So the, the reseller might be buying different components, building a server infrastructure that could be server storage and networking. Then they can also buy rock with that server and then configure the, the server before shipping it out to the customer. And then right. with OEM, I am, if you are going down, and I'm going to use another two acronyms that we will go through. So with CTO and BTO. So CTO oh, is, oh, sorry, Tom. Oh, what? What? So I did say I was going to explain what they meant. Uh, right. CTO is configure to order, which yeah. means that the, the hardware vendor, say someone like Dell, HPE, Fujitsu, Lenovo will configure that server for the reseller and then okay. ship it directly from the factory to the reseller through distribution. So with CTO, you tend to find that you would do OEM version because they will, they will install it at the factory. So it will be pre-installed on the server, ready to be installed, whereas Rock reseller option kit is more of a BTO, which is build to order, which is more to do with what's in stock at distribution. So distribution will hold stock of server storage and networking components that they will then put together as a bundle for the reseller. And then you can uh -huh. put Rock reseller option kit with that. So everything ships together. 
So if you're looking for something very, very quickly that's in stock, yeah. then BTO with rock is is more of the the, the choice ah. for the partner. So that's the two differences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that makes sense. And is there any differences in features or functionality? Because I'd imagine, you know, or, or even if you were to say go and buy a copy of Windows Server on its own, is there a, you know is there a difference between that and Rock and, and OEM? Like, you know, what what are the benefits of doing it this way? Like, why? Why bother? For, for, for me, the, there are three numbers, 82, 25, and 33, that we should always remember around OEM and ROC licensing. Yeah. And well, that's 80, 82, 25, 82, 25, 25, and 33. Okay, so 82, so 25, 82, 33. So 82% faster to actually deploy the server. On average, it's about 25% less expensive than a volume license. And it takes about 33 steps less to configure that server once it's actually at the customer. What we mean by 33 steps less, on average, a server would take about 38 different steps to go through to install that server. So if your server turned up, and you had your operating system and you downloaded your operating system mm. from a volume license perspective, it would take you about 38 steps to configure that and have it ready to be on your infrastructure. Whereas with an, an OEM or ROC version, it's actually only five steps because the drivers come pre-tested and certified for that hardware. So whether it's Dell, HPE, Lenovo, or Fujitsu. We've been working with all of these manufacturers for the last 25, 30 years, and they all pre-test pre and certify their drivers to work with our software, and it's all bundled together. So rather than having to download the volume license version and then go away to the Microsoft website and the vendor website and download the latest drivers, everything comes in that box and it's pre-tested pre and it's certified. Mm. So it's actually ready to go. So that's one of the advantages of OEM and ROC is everything is all certified and, and testing. And I'm yeah. going to uh, probably talk about something else as well, and that's support, uh, because support is obviously very key and critical to any implementation of a server well, infrastructure. Well, I was going to ask you that, right? I was going to ask you that, Pete, because whose product is it? Because it's obviously, it's a Microsoft product, but you're buying it, say, for example, from the OEM or from a uh, distribution in, in an OEM box called ROC, which is a reseller option kit. Yep. So say, for example, I'm buying a HPE server with a HPE ROC. Who do I go to for support? Tom, you, you hit the nail on the head. That's one of the advantages, again, of OEM and ROC, is you're going to right. one company for support. So your hardware vendor that you've purchased the server from and the ROC version from, they will give you installation support. So you get free installation support within for the first 90 days. So you don't have to, if you have any issues configuring it or installing it, you would then have to phone the hardware vendor and then phone Microsoft. You don't, you phone the hardware vendor and they have the correct um, support personnel to manage both software and hardware issues. Ah, okay, that that is really simple. So it saves you time, money and stress and it enables a reseller to put more margin on uh, and it gives peace of mind for their end customer. Makes Definitely. 80, 82, 25, 33, Tom. 80, 82, 25, 33. I've, I've written that down. I'm sure that will be in my recap at the end. Uh, if, I've, if I've learned Definitely. nothing, it's those three numbers. Um, so, if that, Peter, honestly, it's always worth talking to you. Thank you. I mean, well, one of the other advantages as well um, that, that I personally see, and, and I get a lot of conversations back from the reseller community and from distribution, is virtual machines. So that's what yeah. that's the way that everybody is setting up their servers these days is they're virtualizing their environment so they're doing more for less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but Pete, this is a massive subject. I mean, this, I'm so glad you brought this up because, um, you know, we've been talking to like other server experts uh, and, you know, this whole hybrid, um, you know, <clears throat> environment piece getting bigger and bigger and bigger is changing the way that people are deploying their infrastructure and, and virtual machines is really important. So I think you were going to probably let us in on why that's important for, for Windows Server, right? Definitely, and if you think about it, one of the one of the myths that we spoke about earlier about debunking is that OEM and Rock lived and died on the server, and we, we've shown that we've got features and functionality within the OEM and Rock license deployment that can help alleviate that that kind of pain point. Yeah. But one of the other myths to, to debunk is that virtual machines can be moved from server to server to server, immaterial of what license is underneath them. So because most organizations these days are virtualizing their environment, that underlying operating system sits at the, the same level and same features as the hardware. So if you imagine if a company has just purchase new hardware, new software, and they're virtualizing their environment, more than likely they're going to keep that server infrastructure for anywhere between three to five years, and it's not going yeah. to change. That's the same for the operating system as, as well, because what's important is the virtual machines that sit on top of it. So mm. if the hardware it's going to be there for three to five years and the operating system is going to be the exact same across that three to five year time frame. Then mm. the virtual machines are the critical element because they're, they're the, the, the elements that need to be moved from server to server in, in some instances. And virtual machines, that, that's one of the myths. Mm. You no, look I, like you've I, got I a think... question there, Tom. Yeah, I, I, I do because, I, you know, I think this is one of the things when you know, when I've spoken to uh, pre-sales experts and stuff like that, they kind of say to me, well, I'm not even going to bother putting the license on that because they're going to use it on a VM. And, you know, what you're saying to me is actually, I think a few more questions need to be asked by people. What is the scenario? Where are you using it? How long is it going to be in place for? Because there's potentially cost savings for people if they use all the licensing tools that are available of which Rock and OEM is one of them. I mean, it might well be that VM is actually right for that customer if it's going into a certain scenario. But if if it's actually going to be like, you know, a standalone machine that, you know, the asset's going to be sweated in a branch or something like this, then maybe Rock or OEM is actually the better license. It's more cost effective and quicker to deploy. That's kind of what I picked up from everything you just explained. So it's all about asking the right questions, isn't it, Pete? It, it is. And, and what... There's two questions to ask, and I just held up three fingers there. There's only two questions to ask. I, the, the, the first question is... All your forecasting. That's it. Uh, is what is your host operating system? And he, here's, a, here's another fun fact for you, Tom, in that 75% of all servers there are are sold will have Windows Server uh, 2019 or a previous version sitting on them. So there's still yeah. a, a huge demand for Windows Server. And if 75% of them have them on there, they'll either be on as the host operating system or the guest operating system. So it's always important yeah. for resellers and pre-sales to ask those two questions. What is your host operating system? And what is your guest? Because Windows Server 2019 yeah. still has an opportunity in both of those environments. And what we were, what I was meaning by the virtual machines is that what you'll have is you'll have your server infrastructure, then you'll have your operating system, and then customers will virtualize that environment. So they'll be putting different versions of Windows Server in containers or whether in virtual machines. Yeah. Those virtual machines can be moved from server to server to server. So if you have your server infrastructure and your operating system that you are going to be keeping the same for three to five years, it makes sense yeah, yeah, to buy the most sense. cost effective operating system license. Yeah. So rather yeah, than paying. 
and if you already own it and you can reuse it, then that's that's great value for money as well. So Definitely. brilliant. And something else that um, people talk about a lot is downgrading. Now, look, I'm, I understand why people do it, right? Maybe because they're sweating assets. But actually, I think I think the important thing really is, is you know, when we consider where we're going with, with the server business, with the cloud, you know, I think hybrid being the new end state for people, obviously, I know a lot of people would like to go all the way to the cloud, but they can't. But getting there is obviously, that's where, you know, the, you know, the latest versions of Windows Server get you there. But if you want to downgrade, can you? Yes. Sim oh, sim simple are. answer is yes. There, there you go. And the, the, the phrase to remember is N minus two. So what, we're, what we mean by that is from 2019, you can go back to previous versions. Okay. So you can downgrade back to 2012. Any version that's still in support. Back to 2003? No, because 2003 <laughs> and 2008 are no longer supported uh, products within the Microsoft family. Um, so you can't go back uh, and downgrade to, to those versions. Um, but but there is another fair, thing. That was quite a few years. 2003 was quite a few years ago, right? So it, it um, certainly is. <laughs> I think that's fair but enough. There are, there are still a number of um, companies who are still using 2003 because the application that they're using on top of it dictates that they still have to use 2003. So again, with virtualization, if you own the license for 2003 or 2008, then you can still put it in a virtualized environment. But it's better and safer to have that in a 2019 environment because of the security yeah. and, and uh, everything else that goes with that. And I believe you've got a session on security coming up, so I won't steal any of that thunder because I believe you've no. got a better expert than me on that. Pete, there's no better expert than you on anything. I, I won't hear it. Um, but um, but they, I think they might be better than you. Well, actually, they are better than you on security. But you're you're the best on licensing. So we've got the right man for the job for this conversation. Hello. Thank you, thank thank you, Tom. The, there is there is <laughs> one other thing to to think about as well with uh, when you're talking cool. about downgrading. Uh, and so downgrading, there are two different things. You've got downgrading where you can downgrade to previous versions, and then you have down addition which is completely separate. So down okay. addition, so if you imagine the scenario where you have a customer that's purchased data center and within a virtualized environment, they actually want to use standard so they can down, down addition to standard from data center. So you can actually go from addition backwards. So you can go yeah. from data center to standard and if you wanted, and, and there aren't many people that would do this, but you can actually go from standard to essentials. So, and that's fine. Does that consume the license or, uh, I, I'm just saying, because that sounds like a very expensive way to buy a, a standard edition. That, that's what my mind's doing. Well, you know I mean? well, well, well if, would you, if you have, have one of your VMs or, or how would that work? You, you, would, you would use one of your unlimited VMs within data center to achieve that so you can go back. So rather than, than having data center as your virtualized environment, because you know with data center, you've got unlimited virtual machine capability. So yeah. in one of those virtual machines, you can actually down addition to standard if standard was what was dictated because of the application that was sitting on top of that. Because again, if you imagine it's a kind of stacked environment, so you've got your yeah your hardware, your server storage networking, your operating system, your virtualized environment, and then your application sitting on top of it. Hey, I, I love talking to you because every time I've talked to you afterwards, I always think I've learned something. And that's brilliant. So thank, thank you for you. that, Pete. Um, well, look, I think we're at the end of the licensing section. Uh, you know what I mean? And if people, if people are still watching, um, because I know, I know everyone loves licensing. Um, we, we've got this bit that we do every one of these, uh, rocked the cloud, rocked the cloud, uh, 
podcasts, whatever you want to call them, with these sessions that we talk about server, we've got a little section called the Server Meme Review. Uh, I think we're probably going to come up with a better name for that, but I mean, it's particularly catchy. Um, but as always, uh, the guys who help me make this show, um, they are they are jokesters. Uh, they think they're really funny. And they also like making me look a bit silly. So they're conscious that I am not a solutions architect or, in fact, a solution surveyor like yourself, Pete. Um, but they, 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 they go and pick server memes. Apparently, server memes are, are a whole big thing in this, in this community, right? And apparently, people find them very funny. And every time I, I look at them, I'm like, I don't get it, right? So they've gone out and they found two memes that they're going to show. And um, you know, like when they do that thing on the internet where they make people like watch those things where they go through a maze and then there's a horrible face. It's a little bit like that. They flash the meme up and then they, they see our reactions, okay? So fingers crossed, uh, if, if I count them in three, two, one, can we see the first meme? I'll do that in a second. Not yet, lads. Um, and then, uh, Pete, we're going to get your views and opinion on what your thoughts are around the meme. And obviously then anybody who's watching in the audience, please let us know what you think of these memes. Uh, and if there's any memes that you want to see, um, uh, forward them on, and then, then we'll see what we can, we can do about getting them on the show. So. Three, two, one. Here's the first meme. <laughs> What's Sean Bean got to do with servers? <laughs> Pete, is that funny? I don't know. One, one does not simply reboot a server. <laughs> Are you you're Lord of the Rings yes, fan? It's not Lord of the, is it Lord of the Rings? It is Lord of the Rings, isn't it? Yeah, I, I would certainly say it's Lord of the Rings. And, and yes, one does not simply reboot a server. Um, and again, <laughs> with the way that today's technology is, you, you you don't need to reboot a server. And I'm sure, Tom, you've got loads of stuff coming up about things like Storage Spaces Direct and Storage Replica that, that takes away the need for you to reboot the server. So, uh, yeah, I yeah. think we could slide that one away. I think I think what we can do is we can send Sean Bean a uh, the video for uh, Storage Spaces Direct afterwards and then that we can get rid of that meme. Problem solved. Meme Definitely. busted. Yeah, thanks a lot, Pete. Brilliant. Right, okay, so, um, right, meme number two. Three, two, one. Here we go. <laughs> What's going on here? Is, <laughs> we really should upgrade. Is that, that looks like it's a, a loaf, is that a loaf of bread? I think that's a loaf of bread. <laughs> that looks like really? a Have sourdough loaf of bread? bread. It's a what, sorry? I think that looks like a sourdough loaf of bread that uh, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people were, were perfecting during lockdown. Really? Have you seen a few of them servers in your time, Pete? I certainly have. I, big lumps of lumps of bread that just sit in the corner. Uh, yes, oh, I, 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 I like that it. one. You we really it. should Shut upgrade. Saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you've made a bit of dough out of this industry, Pete. Tom, I, there is no answer to that. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? Sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't help myself making a, a little bread joke. Okay, right. So look, uh, obviously, uh, let's get these memes out of there because I obviously don't get them, which is fine. Yes, I look stupid. Appreciate that, and I know the audience appreciates that. There's always somebody on their side who looks as uh, as stupid as possible on film. Um, but um, if you've got any thoughts on the memes, like I said, drop us a note and uh, we'll get them into the show. But we're going to do a quick recap, uh, just so everybody understands what's going on. So, Pete, what did you know? What have we covered today? We've covered OEM and Rock licensing. We've debunked a few myths around what you would use it for, when you would use it. We've learned something, um, uh, which is uh, eighty-two twenty-five thirty-three. So it's eighty-two percent faster, twenty-five percent cheaper on average. Asterisk, and it's thirty-three steps easier to install saving you time and money for people installing servers um, so that's really kind of what we've learned we've understood about downgrades and vms and what to use where so those are the things that i've really taken for today's episode pete is there anything i've missed no tom you you, you actually covered you you've covered all of them there i think the 82 25 33 i think is should be top of mind for everybody when you're talking about oem why oem and, and rock is 82 percent faster yeah. to deploy 
25 yeah. percent less expensive as you said and also 33 steps less and then debunking yeah. uh the, the myths around what you can and cannot do with it not living and dying on the server as it did before which is absolutely fantastic yeah. so Rock and OEM should be a consideration in every server build that our partners are doing. Uh, I, it yeah. can and does have a place and, and should be in every server build. That's my thought anyway. Pete, that was a beautiful episode. We learned all about Rock. And uh, I was talking to Dwayne earlier on the phone and he said, don't be a jabroni. Make sure you are quoting uh, with rock where possible, because uh, that is the best thing to do for your servers. Uh, and so that's it for today. Um, thank you very much for joining us on today's episode of From the Rock to the Cloud. Uh, we've had Pete Perms with us. Um, and again, can't thank you enough, Pete. So thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Have a great day. You're welcome, Tom. And thank you very much for the invitation. And hopefully I'll be on a, a few more sessions and podcasts that you're doing in the future. Of course, Pete. We'd love to have you.